Yo, what's going on YouTube? I'm Sue, and about six to seven months ago, I did a first impressions video for Chaos Zero Nightmare. In case you don't know, Chaos Zero Nightmare is the follow-up project to Epic Seven by publisher Smoggy, as well as the development team over at Super Creative. Here on my YouTube channel, I primarily cover Epic Seven. It is the main gotcha game here on the channel, although I do cover a couple of other ones from time to time. So naturally, I'm pretty interested in this game because it is the follow-up to my main game here on the channel. On top of that, from what we learned last time, it is a game with roguelike elements and is also got some card game elements as well. And before I was a gotcha game content creator, I was also a card game content creator. I covered trading card games, collectible card games, things like that. Had a very successful time in that space. So needless to say, this whole game is kind of my jam because it's the intersection of two things that I am very passionate about. It is uh, a game that feels like it is mostly targeted at me. So naturally last night when they kind of unveiled the website that I'm on now, along with all of the cool characters and a lore dump and stuff that got me super hyped. But more importantly than that, they also showed off a gameplay trailer, which was the big thing that I was complaining about last time. We didn't get to see any of the in-game footage. It was just cutscenes and things like that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to quickly play the actual gameplay trailer here from the official YouTube channel kind of commentate on it, you know, my thoughts on it, how everything breaks down, what I like, what I don't like, and then we'll talk about some of the stuff here on the website after. Anyways, I've already watched this, so it's not going to be my first reaction, but again, I do want to point out some of the things that I think people might have missed here. So, as you can see here, it's made by Smog getting super creative, like we just talked about. Still has that same anime aesthetic you've come to know and love from Epic Seven. Still has that Evangelion slash horror vibe also from last time. There's the chibis that people are panning, right? So we'll say this, they uh, the chibi graphics are here, which I know a lot of people were not super happy about, right? That they had chibi instead of full-size sprites like you've come to expect from Epic 7. That said, I think that this is a pretty good compromise in the fact that it has the chibi aesthetic from games like Azure Lane and Art Knights, but you also have here in the foreground on the left, these the back shots of these live 2D characters, which is more in line with something like Epic Seven or Goddess of Victory Nike. So I really like the fact that it has the best of both worlds here. I know it's going to have a lot of detractors, but I think this is a better aesthetic than people were originally giving it credit. And then you can see, obviously, here are the cards here. Uh, unfortunately, all of the effects are in Korean, but uh, from what I could tell, the top left is the cost that it takes to pay, uh, play for the card. The icon here tells you what type of card. In this case, it's an attack. And then here's the effect. And as far as I can tell, this 07 is how much uh, resources you have access to. And then you have obviously all of your health and status here in the top left, right? So that's pretty cool. And then they still have the cool animations for the S3. You'll notice that the cutscenes are very similar to how they are at Epic 7. It goes from chibi to live 2D animation. Yeah, some of the S3s look really sick, in my opinion. You have, like, a story or an adventure mode, different decision trees, more cutscenes. And you may notice this guy here that they have, uh, they put a huge emphasis on screen here. See if I can pause it in a second. Yeah, so this guy should look kind of familiar to some of you. Uh, in case you guys don't know, this is, uh, according to some of the leaks that we've seen, this is k -Ron, like, actually k -Ron from Epic Seven. So, uh, if you are disappointed in him and his performance in that game, but you're a fan, well, I guess this is their way of kind of trying to get you to come over and try the new game, because he seems like he'll be a pretty prominent character here as well. His animations are pretty nice, too. Very reminiscent of Straza. And of course, he looks super cool here with his little like cape flowing in the wind. So that's pretty nice. More cool cutscenes. More of these like in-game cutscenes when I guess like status effects happen or things like that. Again, I think this aesthetic is better than people are giving it credit. I get, assume that's the game over screen. Yeah. <laughs> in case you guys uh, missed this, so let's back this up a second. Um, 
This game has definitely got some very dark and mature themes, uh, despite the chibi kitty aesthetic here. You may have noticed that this girl gets crushed here. Like, she actually just goes splat. <laughs> this person turns into, like, a tree and gets dismembered. Um, and it's not just, like, these, like, pre-rendered cinematics. It's in-game as well, as you can see. Uh, that person just had their head eaten off. So this is definitely, um, I think not the game that people were expecting. It's certainly not the game that I was expecting in terms of, like, what kind of story and tone it was setting up. Because Epic 7 is very lighthearted, uh, high fantasy. It's got some comedic moments. And for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. Your standard, like, you know, rated T for teen JRPG style fare. This seems to be targeted at a much more mature audience, like an 18 plus audience. So, again, despite that kitty aesthetic, um, I'm here for it. Anyways, so... If you come here to the actual website, you'll notice that there's these buttons at the top, news, right? You can see all the latest stuff that they've posted here over on uh, the artist formerly known as Twitter, as I like to refer to it. Right, and then they have these this cool live 2D here that's also a chibi. There's a lore exposition dump, but this basically is just, uh, you know, some scrolling text. And for the most part, this button here, it will just link you to the old YouTube video that we talked about in the previous impressions video. Now, the really cool thing here about this website is they actually updated with some of the factions and the playable characters that are in the game, as you can see here with these icons. So there's the Terra Scions, right? These are like, uh, I guess, your technologically advanced humans. And you can click these buttons here to see all the various different characters. So here is uh, Renoa. This is a character that we saw in the trailer. Right? She's like the first live 2D one that we saw. And as you can see, you can highlight these kind of cards and it'll do a little like animation for what it would look like in game. And I think these cards have pretty sick animation as far as I could tell. Um, I would wish I could kind of make them a bit larger so I could see them a bit better. So we have Mika here, right? We have Haru. This is another one that was in the trailer. This one's been promoted a lot on like their YouTube shorts, their Discord, things like that. If you've been following along with the game. We have Owen, right, with his, like, spear. Again, like, the card art on these is pretty nice for the most part. It feels very reminiscent of, like, Marvel Snap, where cards just have these, like, really vibrant and interesting animations. And I bet you if they have, like, skins, the, the animation on the card art will probably change in the future as well. Uh, then you have Yuki, in case you were wondering. Yes, there will be fan service characters, so uh, I guess Booba enjoyers, uh, you could rejoice that they will appear here in this game as well. Then we have Iron Rain. This is another human faction. Anika is one character. Maribel. Apparently she's like, I guess, uh, kind of a uh, a shielder based on what you can see. You can see Resolute Blitz is an attack. Maribel Shelter Mark II is an attack. Wolves Dome is some kind of like buff. OIC is a skill. So like it's cool that you can kind of get an idea, even without seeing what the card effects are, what this character's kind of like loadout is, what kind of deck they play. It's like partially support. Partially damaged based on the cards. I like that a lot that they give me an idea of what the character will be like. There's Luke with his guns. Scroll down here. And then here's Beryl. Beryl obviously being the little girl that's in a lot of the promotional material. Again, card art looks really nice on these things. Thalemia. This is a, apparently these are dragon, a race of dragon people. So you have uh, Serethea, uh, Iceland. Salia, Priscilla, Th this screams that this is a five star. There's no way this design is not a five star. I would be very, very surprised. And you have uh, uh, Pelteon here. These are like cyborg characters. And some of these designs are really sick. I think this one, Cassius, is pretty cool looking. I like the fact that he's all, his skills kind of imply that he's like an RNG character with the dice and the cards and everything. I think that's super sick. Uh, Euphenia this is another one that was in the trailer. I think it was in the, she was prominently featured in the previous trailer. So again, another cool looking waifu. Chizuru here. Looks like a samurai style character. Narja, this is a character I'm very interested in. I think this character's design is super, super sick. She's got like kind of like one demon arm and she commands these kind of like ghost beings. I think these are, this is a really sick looking character design. And then you have, uh, Alexia here. 
who feels very reminiscent of like Lambda or Nu, or if you've ever played any of the Blaze Blue games. And then our last faction here is the uh, Stella Familia, who seems to be a bunch of animal characters, like animal hybrids. So, like this girl Veronica is like half rabbit, apparently. Uh, you have Hugo here, who's like half wolf. Uh, and by the way, I, I didn't point this out, but there is the uh, Korean and Japanese audio for these characters on here. So for example, you have Hugo here, who's uh, Nakamura Yuichi. Yeah, so... Yeah, so really sick performance here. In case you don't know, uh, Nakamura is the voice of Krau, right? Very famous Japanese uh, anime voice act uh, over artist. So yeah, some pretty big uh, heavy hitters once again from Super Creative for their kind of characters. They've kind of enlisted some of the best of the best. Uh, another character I'm super interested in here is this girl here, Magna. This is the girl that we saw like fighting everybody in the trailer at like super high speeds. Uh, you know me, I love some brawlers. I love characters like Hua Young and things like that. So this is a pretty sick looking design to me. Uh, feels very reminiscent of like Yang, I feel like from Ruby for anybody who watched that. Uh, we have Carl, which honestly, Carl feels like such a generic name for this design. <laughs> He's got like a cool scythe. Uh, and then finally we have uh, Calipi uh, with her like giant angel wings and what looks like a huge ass sword. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the characters that they've shown. Uh, and then obviously this, the music you've heard throughout the trailer, you can find all the different tracks here on the website, but you can kind of cycle through them, get an idea for what the OST is going to be for this game. Uh, overall, it's not like amazing. I still think games like Nikkei have uh, a better OST. But I definitely think that the tracks here uh, on display are quite a bit better than the ones that are in Epic 7. So overall, uh, I'm feeling pretty optimistic about the state of Chaos Zero Nightmare, right? So for me, yeah, I can't really ask for too much more, except for at this point, when is the release date? Are you guys going to hit us with a beta? Any of that stuff, that would be awesome. So Smogate, I'm begging you, please. This was a great info dump. Uh, it has reinvigorated my excitement for the game. But like, when can I play it? That's my next question. Originally, the target was for the end of the year 2024. I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks that they'll unveil more information, including maybe, like I said, uh, when we could actually play the damn thing. Anyways, those are pretty much just my thoughts on this update on Chaos Zero Nightmare. Let me know down in the comment section below how you feel about everything that I showed here today. Uh, any of the stuff I might have missed over on the, the artist formerly known as Twitter, any of that stuff that they post because I haven't been able to keep up with everything, that would be awesome. Oh, and one more thing. If you are new here and you're not already subscribed and interested in Chaos Zero Nightmare, make sure you do hit that subscribe button when the game finally goes live. I'm going to go pretty hard on it, try and figure out really what makes the game tick, release a bunch of content and guides. You know how we already do it here on the channel. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this second look at Cal Zero Nightmare, and as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.